Hello and welcome to this session. I am Professor Esila, the Director of Operations Management Academy. Today we'll discuss the seven principles of supply chain management as outlined by Anderson, Britt, and Fev in the first issue of Supply Chain Management Review Journal and they have survived the test of time. So as a supply chain management professional, understanding supply chain standards, such as the supply chain operation reference model, also known as SCORE, the seventh principle of supply chain management is essential for effectively orchestrating your supply chains. A deep understanding of these principles empowers you to effectively orchestrate supply chain strategy and efficiently manage critical level one supply chain processes such as planning, ordering, sourcing, transforming, fulfilling, returning, and to some extent, enabling and controlling operations. Of course, you must ensure that you implement multi-directional supply chain orchestration. The seven principles of supply chain management have consistently proven effective in driving value for organization globally. In this section, I will offer an updated perspective on these principles to ensure they align with today's supply chain challenges. I will also provide examples of critical actions that demonstrate how this principle can be implemented to transform supply chains within organization. So let's dive into the first principle. Principle number one, segment customers based on logistic and supply chain needs. This principle emphasizes the importance of moving away from traditional customer segmentation method, such as product-based segmentation, and instead focusing on the specific logistics and supply chain needs of each customer. By segmenting customers based on criteria like fulfillment priorities or service frequency, organizations can fine-tune their supply chain services to better align with each customer's unique demand, leading to improved efficiency and customer satisfaction. So we're going to move on with uh, supply chain management principle number two. You have to customize the logistic network. This principle advocates for creating flexible supply chain that can quickly adapt to meet customers' specific needs. For example, a company might develop a separate distribution channel for high-priority customer to ensure faster delivery time while using a more cost-effective network for standard orders. Principle number three, you have to listen to market demand signals and plan accordingly. This principle underscores the benefits of closely monitoring market demand signal and adjusting supply chain operations in response. By accurately forecasting demand based on real-time data, Organizations can preemptively sense market signal, response to demand and supply volatility, reduce demand latency, and optimize inventory level and production schedules to better meet customer needs. For example, a retailer might increase the inventory of a trending product during peak seasons by sensing channel signal and analyzing sale data and consumer behavior, ensuring they can meet the demand without overstocking. 
To implement this principle, tools like sales and operations planning, integrated business planning, advanced planning system, what we call AAPS, and network requirement planning, that is a new concept, can be utilized. So the idea here is moving beyond traditional enterprise resource planning system, ERP, we focus those ERP on internal operations. You still need them. However, network requirements planning system offer a broader perspective by addressing the entire supply chain planning process. So that's the path for success. Now, principle number four, differentiate products closer to your customer. This principle involves delaying the final customization of products until they are closer to the end customer, allowing more flexibility and responsiveness to customer preferences. By postponing product differentiation, customer can reduce inventory costs and adapt to specific customer demand more efficiently. For example, an electronics manufacturer might produce generic versions of a product and customize features or packaging at a regional distribution center based on local market needs. Principle number five, strategic sourcing that will drive strategic value. This principle focuses on sourcing materials and services that add strategic value to the organization rather than simply minimizing costs. Businesses can enhance their competitive advantage by carefully selecting suppliers based on factors like quality, reliability, and alignment with company goals. For example, a company might choose a slightly more expensive supplier that offers superior quality and faster delivery times, ensuring they can consistently meet customers' expectations and maintain a strong market position. Principle number six here is going to be develop a supply chain-wide technology strategy. So this principle emphasizes integrating technology across the entire supply chain to enhance coordination, connectivity, visibility, predictability, and decision-making in general. For instance, by implementing enterprise-wide ERP system, what we call Enterprise Resource Planning System. If you combine that by supply chain event management software, what we call SCEM, and you also add a supply chain execution system, that company can monitor and manage supply chain activity in real time. Additionally, if you leverage advanced technology like cloud computing, the Internet of Things, cognitive analytics, blockchain, artificial intelligence that will allow not just to treat what we call unstructured data, the data that is usually difficult to treat. And this will help for predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics, and even cognitive analytics. Blockchain will enhance security and will also allow it seamless communication across the entire supply chain. So the role of network requirements planning, NRP, which goes beyond ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. So NRP, Network Requirements Planning, is crucial in ensuring that all these technologies work together efficiently, providing a sense of reassurance about the effectiveness of the integration. Principle number seven, the last principle, adopt channel spanning metrics. This principle advocates for the use of metrics that span the entire supply chain, not just internal operations or by functions in the organization. So, in short, this will ensure that all participants are aligned toward a common goal. 
and long-term success. So by implementing robust control tower capability, for example, and maintaining supply chain transparency and visibility from your supplier, you can confidently monitor performance across the network. For example, a Scott card approach using cross-functional and cross-organizational metrics, including four-party logistics performance measurement, ensure that all parties are evaluated and optimized based on their contribution to the overall chain effectiveness. So now in summary, while progress has been made in supply chain strategy, there is still a long way to go in designing, formulating, and implementing truly integrated supply chain systems. It is crucial to stay updated with technological advancement as they will be a game changer. Advancements like enterprise resources planning ERP system, network requirements planning NRP system, along with control tower capability, cloud computing, cognitive computing, cognitive analytics will play a vital role. Incorporating blockchain and artificial intelligence will further revolutionize our supply chain, driving greater efficiency, visibility, and transparency. So as we're moving from supply-centric to demand-centric planning technology in supply chain, the future is promising, but you need to be on the lookout. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.